Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. As you can tell, Art Kirsch and I are with the lovely Michelle Fabrega, our love and relationship coach. Michelle, good to see you. Hi, John. Hi, Art. Hi. Good, good morning, Michelle. Here. You know what? Um, sometimes we sort of like give you leading questions. Is there something you'd like to talk about today? Yeah, I have something in mind. So um, one of the things that I notice in my friendships and relationships is that there's this concept of like privacy and confidentiality. And I just think it's something to talk about. I kind of wanted to shine the spotlight on that. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. It's it, it's common to everybody. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah. Somebody, when somebody breaks a confidence, that's painful. Mm. Yeah, because basically one of the delicate things in, in you know, either love relationships or friendships or families is, is the way we handle other people's information. So, for instance, like, you know, you tell one of your siblings something and then they tell the other person about it. Like, wait a second, I didn't mean to share it with both my siblings. I just wanted to share it with this particular person. So, yeah. so we kind of like make assumptions sometimes about that. Or your friend tells you something about her spouse and then you tell your spouse. And it's kind of like, I don't think he really would have wanted him to know about, the, you know what I'm saying? So it gets a little tricky. Even if it's, you think, you know, you share it with one of my, like me, for instance, I share something with one of my daughters and then um, maybe I wouldn't share with the other or vice versa, you know? So, so yeah. it's kind of like all these scenarios, I, I think it, you know, what it comes down to is our own discretion and the assumptions we make, right? And what we think the other person wants and what we think is okay, what we think, oh my God, this is too juicy not to share, right? But but you know we we've, we've talked about gossip and you, you both know my stance on gossip we're not I'm, I'm not not on board with that <laughs> so yeah well, this is something i like to look at when i, I talk I, about I, michelle i wonder um you know there are there seems to be from my point of view it seems to be in everybody's life a person who you have to tell uh, I, 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 maybe it's a spouse and they get insulted if you don't tell them everything. Why didn't? Mm. Why wouldn't you tell me? I'm your wife, you know, or whatever the relationship is. I'm your sister. How can you keep that from me? <laughs> um, and there are people like that 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 don't necessarily have the right to know the secrets you're keeping for for other people. Right, right. And I think that's true. You know, they get to have that desire to want to, oh, of course you have to tell me this, but you know what? That's not your problem to, to solve their need to know. I mean, some of us have different levels of curiosity. Some of us have insatiable curiosity, right? But, um, yeah. but you know, if somebody tells you not to tell you to share something, you know, that's obviously, you really want to honor that, right? And, you know, of course, I'm not talking about like an abuse or you know, neglect situation or criminal activity. I mean, that's a whole different category, right? I'm talking about things like, you know, your health or your well-being, your sure. beliefs you're having, your relationship, finances, any sort of like circumstances. That I really, I, I really want to encourage people to assume that the relationship is private to the individual telling you. They are telling you, you, some something, somebody specifically they chose to share it with you, and that's it. And that's kind of like theirs. And now you have access to it, but it's not yours to share elsewhere. Th that's kind of my personal belief and ethos that I've been living. And I think it, and of course, as a coach, I mean, everything shared in session, I don't share with anybody else. Of course, that's yeah. maintaining that. So I've practiced that ability to just, this is private, but, um, and, and we can always ask for permission, you know, gee, does your sister know about this? You know, um, and, and, but, but otherwise, you know, you know, the whole thing about, we get into trouble with assumptions, right? There's that old saying, to assume is to make an ass yes. out of you and me. Yes. So, so yeah. Um, it, it does seem to me that there's a very fine line, because uh, this is a, an important topic, I think. There's a fine line between sharing something like that and gossiping. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and maybe it's based on the content, you know, what, how important the information is, or how trivial it might be, or how 
mean, you know, it might be. But I think it's also a certain amount of confidentiality. So you have to respect privacy, not not just. I mean, people don't always say, "Don't tell anybody this." But right, right. Sometimes they just assume that you would have, you would understand that this is important to them, and it's not something to be discussed with other people. Yeah, and that's how we build trust with each other, right? I mean, when you know, when we spill the beans, we can damage trust. Yeah. And so it's just, um, and it makes it, you know, less likely they're going to share something with us in the future, you know, and so it kind of just, it can degrade the connection and intimacy in that relationship, that friendship, right? Um, And the one thing that I want to add too is that there's also often in in families, especially large families, there's usually somebody who's like the connector, right? And they tend to stay connected to everyone in the family and then they relay information. And so, you know, yeah, I just want to just invite discretion in here, right? Because in some circumstances, oh yeah, you, you know, your brother got a new job. He's moving. I think he's going to be moving, you know, whatever. Some of these things are probably like more benign to share. And, and so that person, you know, is kind of the keeper of the, the family, you know, they kind yeah. of keep the herd together. And so, um, but I would say that generally there's some questions to ask yourself before you reveal some personal information. Yeah. And, um, and I'm not talking about maybe these more lighter things, but, you know, did I get explicit permission to share information with this person, you know, someone, you know, uh, has gained a lot of weight and they're struggling with that. And it's like, maybe they don't want you to share that. So did you get, you know, explicit permission to share that information with someone else? Right. And, yeah. um, what are the possible ramifications to sharing, right? What awkward future encounters between the people (laughs) am I setting the stage for, you know, do I want to be the, you know, creator of like this awkwardness down the road. And, Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we have like a deeper motivation, like I'm trying to help. Oh, you're struggling with that. Well, I know somebody else. Well, that's great. But a a better uh, option would be to, gee, you know, I know somebody else who's struggling with this. Would you be interested in in talking with them about, I, I I don't want to tell you who it is, but Mm -hmm. I, if that would be useful, I can tell your cousin, you know, you can talk, I wouldn't say cousin, right, until they said yes, but then you can connect the people because that can be helpful, right? But you wait and and, and kind of protect the anonymity of the people first. Yeah. Um, yeah, so- but I think um, well, and, part, and, of it, part of it is um, that it, it does borderline on uh, gossip when you get some confidential information and you share with somebody else. And, and just as an aside, uh, I, I know a number of people who tell you things in confidence, praying that you're going to tell somebody else. In other words, <laughs> they they think they they want you to be the conf- the the uh, the uh, uh, conduit of that information because they don't have either the courage or uh, that feel comfortable bringing it up to that person or to other people. So they want their situation known. But uh, in my case, I I've always run into trouble. Somebody tells me something in confidence. Uh, I won't even talk to them about it again, unless there was an explicit mm. thing of, uh, hey, you know, I'm having trouble with that. And then maybe six months later, say, so, well, did you solve that problem? I won't tell anybody. And then I get, I get a left-handed uh, note from somebody. Did you know that you didn't? Like you said before, and you didn't tell me mm. from a third person. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. you're almost damned if you do, damned if you don't. Listen, <laughs> and uh, uh, and just don't repeat it. Why? Yeah. Yeah. And I, kind of like, oh, go ahead, John. I, I think a lot of us know people who are that conduit. And and my family, uh, we, we have a little phrase: telephone, telegraph, telefred, <laughs> cousin Fred. All you got to do is tell mm-hmm. cousin Fred, everybody and knows. everybody knows. So if you if mm-hmm. you want to get the word out, call mm-hmm. cousin Fred. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I think it, you know, it sometimes that can really work. But you know you know, the game of telephone, right? That we used to play as kids. It's like, you know, I tell one person and it goes down the line. By the end of the line, the message has yeah. totally changed. Right. And yeah. so we, we can't really control what what gets revealed when we're not even the ones speaking it. When somebody else is relaying the, the challenge right. that we're having or the, the change, it's like, what? They said I'm moving to what? No, I'm not going there. This is what... Right. Anyway, so it's just, yeah. I just want to shine the spotlight and just... You know, decide in, in circumstance. Oh, 
how do I want to be in this situation? What's, what's relevant to share and what do I keep to myself? And, and then the final thing I want to say too, is that as long as we feel like we get a free pass to share with our partner and, um, I'm kind of on the fence about that one. So I don't know, I guess that's a, that's kind of a personal decision, right? So sometimes I feel like I get a free pass to share with Dave, for example, or sometimes I, if the person asked me explicitly, please don't share with Dave, of course I wouldn't, but um, some, some, you know, challenges are hard to hold. So there's always a way to get support around them. If somebody tells you something that is really distressing you, you talk to a trust, you know, coach, counselor, somebody to work it through, right? If you need that. Right. That's a good point. Good point. There's always a professional. Okay, so uh, Michelle, thank you. I, I yeah. Think it's been an, an uh, and you can time. share. Uh, you can share that thank you with anybody you choose, because we always thank you, and we want people to know that. <laughs> For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.